Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video we're going to do an introduction to dedicated pools within Azure Synapse Analytics and some of the common questions and things that I hear a lot when talking to customers. So just hold on. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and go back and watch the rest of this series. Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about dedicated pools. We have these conversations with customers all the time, customers that are calling us up, taking, you know, boot camps with us, signing up for on-demand learning. And the questions always come up when we're doing the training. Should they do the training in Azure Synapse Analytics or should they do it in Data Factory? In fact, before that question usually comes up, customers will look at me and say, hey, we don't need ASA. We don't need Azure Synapse Analytics because we don't have that much data. And I'm like, what do you mean? Of course, I already know because I've had this conversation a lot. But people think of Azure Synapse Analytics and dedicated pools as synonymous, as the same thing. And that's just not true. You can use ASA. You can use all the cool features that we've talked about in this series inside of Azure Synapse Analytics without ever provisioning or ever using a dedicated pool. It is convenient that dedicated pools are available and are um, integrated into Azure Synapse Analytics, but you do not need it. And so we do most of our training here at Pragmatic Works, except for in you know rare situations. We do all of our Data Factory ETL type training. We do it inside of Azure Synapse Analytics. That's what we built all of our you know labs and things like that on because pretty much everything I want to do I can do right here in ASA. Now what is a dedicated pool. If you're watching this video, you're probably kind of curious. A dedicated pool is a relational database. It's tables that have rows and columns, just like a SQL database that you've worked with. The big fundamental difference is that it is designed for big data. Now, big data, I have realized, means something different to everybody. A lot of my users that do Power BI, you know, they're used to working with tens of thousands of rows. So to them, a million rows of data is big data. I mean, Excel has a limitation on around a million rows of data, right? So for them, you know, if you're going over a million, it's big data. But, you know, in the world of data in analytics, one million rows is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. When we're talking about, you know, data, and I'm not going to be able to answer that question for you. How many rows of data is big data? I'm just not going to be able to answer that. I'm sure there's articles out there that'll give you a better idea. But for me, well, let's hold on to that. I'll answer that in just a moment. Let's get this started and you're going to have to wait for my response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and provision a dedicated pool and I'm going to come right over here and click on new. Now I'm inside of ASA. I'm inside of my environment. I'm in the manage hub. And if I want to create a dedicated pool, I just click new right here and I give it a name. I'm going to call this something super creative and awesome like dedicated P1 for my pool one. And then I need to tell it how much compute I'm going to give this dedicated pool. And I'm going to move this all the way down to the bottom in case I accidentally leave it running. It won't cost me a whole bunch of money, but that's going to cost me one dollar and 20 cents per hour, which I'm going to talk about as we go through this. For additional settings, we will leave all of this as default for tags. I'm not going to do anything there, although tags are awesome. I use tags all the time in our actual, you know, pragmatic work subscription and my training subscription. Then I'm going to do review and create and I'm going to click create. And here's the thing. This is going to take a couple of moments to complete. So while that's completing one, why have you not signed up for our on demand learning or our boot camps here at pragmatic works? If you haven't done that, we need you to do that so we can help your organization take the next step, training your people to understand how to make the most of this technology. But let's get back to that question on big data. Why big data? Uh, what is big data? Well, for me, what I will, you know, my conversation with customers a lot of times is, look, if you have 50 million rows, 100 million rows of data, I would probably put it in a regular Azure SQL database, to be honest with you, right? Put it in a regular Azure SQL database that you can scale up and scale down. Um, Azure SQL database, which is just a regular SQL database that's in the cloud, not very expensive generally. There's a lot of different service tiers there. I've done an entire Learn with the Nerds event on Azure SQL database, if I remember correctly. So I think we have a, 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 maybe a three hour video on Azure SQL database, I think. Um, so you can go back and take a look at that video to find out more about that. 
that is very similar to your on-prem SQL Server and what you're used to with a regular database, where you get the benefit of dedicated pool is that a dedicated pool is a massive parallel processing architecture. What does that mean, Mitchell? What does that mean? Well, we talked about this a little bit back in Apache Spark. The architectures have some similarities here because they are both designed for processing big data, right? And so what it means is that as you provision your dedicated pool, now I gave it 100 uh, DWUs, data warehousing units, which is not a lot, so I'm not gonna get a lot of compute nodes in the background, but as you scale it up and you give it more compute power, you get what are called these dedicated compute nodes in the background. And when you run a query, it pushes that query and it breaks it down into smaller pieces and it runs a piece of that query on each of the different compute nodes. Now, I like to think of those compute nodes as individual computers, if you will, right? Each individual computer does its work and then it sends the data back. Why is that important? I've worked for customers that have tons of data I mean, literally uh, hundreds of millions of rows of data per day for each of their data sources. They have 20 data sources. And we did all of that on Azure SQL Database, right? And what happens when you have that much data is you go to your server and you're like, look, we need to squeeze more you know, juice out of this lemon. We need to get more power out of this server. So what do you do? You add more memory. You add more CPUs, more cores, so you can get more parallelism. You add faster CPU. You go in and you talk to your storage administrator, right? The, the, the storage engineering, like, hey, we need faster storage. But at some point, at some point, you hit that law of diminishing returns. It's just not going to run faster, not for how much money you're spending in the effort. And so with dedicated pools, with Apache Spark, with the MPP architectures, you can just scale it out more. You can just distribute the work across more clusters or more computes within that cluster. That's the benefit here. Now, dedicated pools are, you know, you can turn them off when you're not using them. That's important. If you're running it throughout the day, you turn it off when you're not using it. That can save you quite a bit of money. I think we have Austin on my team has actually done a video on YouTube on how to run a pipeline and we run them. He, he's created one for us that runs every day and we'll actually go in and turn off our dedicated pool so that when we're training, we're wrapping up classes in a furious fashion. We don't forget to turn them off. So you want to put together some kind of process to make sure you turn these off. But the thing about a dedicated pool, like any dedicated resource, is that while it's running, you're going to get billed for that resource. So right now, mine is running. It just finished with perfect timing. Couldn't have been any better. And it's running. I can go back into the settings here. I can get the workspace endpoint. That is the workspace endpoint that I would connect to from Management Studio. So yes, if you're asking and thinking that question, I can connect to this dedicated pool from Management Studio. I can write SQL to create tables. I can write SQL to query data and all of that kind of stuff. Now, there are some limitations. Dedicated pools, the one thing I want to tell you here is that with a dedicated pool, and I'm going to turn this off actually, do I want to show anything specifically? Not really. I'm going to turn it off. For the most part, in a lot of ways, it's very similar to Azure SQL Database. You run SQL queries against it to query your data. You run SQL queries to create your objects, your tables, and things like that. But there are limitations compared to a regular SQL Database. And it makes sense when you think about it, right? It's massive parallel processing. You're distributing this work across many different, like I like to think of them as computers, and because you're distributing that work, you know, how, how robust your SQL is, is a little bit more limited. You know, there's not as much support for things like primary keys, and there's no support really for foreign keys. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that you'd be like, whoa, what's going on with that? Even uh, stored procedures, there's now support for that that's been introduced, but then it doesn't cache the stored procedure plan, which I think is fine, not a big deal. And it talks about it in the Microsoft documentation. Um, so that part is, you know, really good. Now, what I won't get into in this video is really a high level overview of the difference between Azure SQL database and dedicated pool. And should you use this or should you use that? What I would recommend is if most people know relational databases, most people are familiar with SQL database, I would recommend you take your data you move it to a regular SQL database. You can probably just do a very quick migration of your on-prem data 
you know, creating the objects and moving the data to the SQL database. And most things are just going to transfer seamlessly. When you move to a dedicated pool, there's a lot more work involved because the structure of your tables, the way that you get better query performance and loading performance of those tables is very much predicated on what type of distribution method do you choose. These are terms that you might not know about that come from SQL Server. And I'm not going to get into those today, right? We're not going to dive deep into the internals of dedicated pools and the table structures, but I want you to know that there are some learning curves there. So do you go with a round robin or a hash or uh, those are really the two main ones there. Do you go, which one do you go with? And if you do go with hash, which means you specify a very specific key, what key do you specify for the distribution? Because behind the scenes, what happens with a dedicated pool table is when you load data into a table, it has 60 distribution nodes in the background. You can think of each of those distribution nodes as a partition. So if you specify customer key as your hash, what happens when you load the data is all of the related customer keys or the same identical customer key will get loaded into the same partition, into the same distribution node. That is obviously very beneficial from a query perspective because when you go to run your query and you have to go, then ideally the query only has to read from that one distribution. So you get partition elimination. The tricky thing is you can actually have partitioning on top of that. So that gets kind of a very interesting conversation to see how that works and how much data you need to really take advantage of that. But there's 60 distribution nodes in the background. You have to choose a hashing key. And then really to get the performance that maybe you're looking for, there's other features that exist in dedicated pools. Now, this was an introduction to dedicated pools. I purposefully did not dive deeper into it because I am going to have more videos that come out where we actually do some stuff with how do I create a table? How do I create the table again with a different distribution so I can test performance with that? What is a materialized view and result set caching? These are great features that work really well with Power BI. So if you're like, hey, Mitchell, we do have a dedicated pool and we have Power BI and I need to be able to query that data and get the best possible performance. What do I do? Well, we can leverage some of those other features, aggregations in Power BI, materialized views inside of dedicated pools, result set caching to keep that data in memory. These are all things that we can do. Short video, hopefully you enjoyed it and got a lot from it. It probably has you asking even more questions than you started with at the beginning, but that's okay. Microsoft does a great job with that documentation. And if you have specific questions, put them in the chat window below, and maybe that'll give me some inspiration for future videos that we can do here at Pragmatic Works. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.